Hi there, everybody. Welcome to another edition of our Facebook Global Live update of travel around the world. Lots of stuff to talk about on this last Friday of January 2022. And of course, if you've got questions, you can always send them in. Uh, crazy times again, and lots of stuff going on. The 5G problems with the airlines still continuing with the cell phone operators. There were cancellations earlier this week in some foreign flights to the U.S., as well as even flights in Seattle when they had low visibility fog situations. This is not an issue that's going to go away. It is a game of chicken. I can tell you right now who's going to blink. It's going to be the cell phone companies because it is a public safety issue. I will be staying on top of that for you. One more thing to report. Not that I didn't tell you it was going to happen. It's happening. Airfares now starting to go up at the rate of about 7% every two weeks. And that's compounded. So for every time you wait, you know what's going to happen. You're going to be paying more. And that's with fewer flights operating. Why? Because the pilots' shortage continues. There's still a staffing problem. United Airlines just announced, I think yesterday, they're opening up their own flight training school because they need pilots. In the old days, here's the way the pipeline worked in terms of how you became a pilot. The airlines depended on the military, the Air Force, the Navy, the Marines, to, to, to supply them with pilots who'd already been more or less trained and then the airlines would pick it up from there. Well, there are fewer fighter pilots out there now. They're all flying drones, they're gamers. So that source of employment and jobs is sort of diminished. It's not sort of diminished, it is diminished. And the airlines have to seek other folks. Plus, you know, we're coming up on a, on a bad anniversary. It was February of 2009. Uh, that was the crash of Colgan Air up near Buffalo. And that was a commuter plane uh, operated by Colgan Air, but it had continental markings on it, as a lot of commuter flights do, right? American is actually operated by somebody else as a commuter flight, United the same way. In those days, it was continental. And what did we discover during the accident investigation, which claimed all those lives, including the pilot and the co-pilot? Well, we discovered the pilot was not such a good pilot. He had failed many of his recurrent training tests, but was still being allowed to fly. The co-pilot had a minimum number of hours in the plane, uh, was being paid so little that she had the salary equivalent of a Walmart greeter, couldn't even afford to live in the city where she was based, which was Newark. So she was commuting from Seattle, where she was at home with her mom, and was deadheading at night on a FedEx plane to land just in time to go take a plane up. So we're dealing with not enough training, and they were fatigued. And then, of course, when they had an icing situation on the plane, which every pilot knows when you're getting next to a stall, when the stick shaker starts, you put the nose down, the pilot pulled the nose up, they went exactly into that stall, and we know the rest of that story. But what came out of that accident investigation was the FAA finally had to, to focus on training and the number of minimum hours required for pilots to fly a plane, to sit in either the left or the right seat. And it bumped it up to like 1,500 hours. So many commuter airlines couldn't find pilots. In fact, today, United even announced they had grounded about 100 of their flights of their planes because they couldn't staff them. So the good news is they're starting flight training again. The airlines are going to do it. The bad news is it's not going to be solved next week. We're talking a three- to four-year process. So your schedule this summer may be affected. So plan accordingly. Uh, oh, this day in history, that's right, 2003, 19 years ago this week, was the beginning of the largest federal agency we've ever seen, the Department of Homeland Security. And that's the birth of uh, not only the DHS, but the TSA. So eight, 19 years ago. Uh, okay, more unruly, disruptive, and possibly violent passengers, but this time it wasn't about masks. It was about Upgrading. That's it. Here's what's going on. You have a lot of people getting on planes today that are that are four separate classes, right? There's first class, business, premium economy, and then coach. And uh, what a lot of passengers were starting to do, they were waiting for the door to close on planes that weren't necessarily full, and they were sneaking back up to premium economy. Flight attendants have manifest. They know who's supposed to sit where. They told them to go back to their original seats because in order to sit in the premium economy seats, although I have no idea why you'd want to do that, you'd have to pay more. 
They refused to do so. And in one particular case, the United Airlines pilot literally turned the plane around and flew it back. And those people were taken off the plane. Crazy stuff out there. It's still not going away. Uh, and then uh, some changes in vaccination requirements overseas. You need to know this. You know, we're over with the, with the one year mark, more or less, of when the vaccines became available. So a number of countries, Switzerland, Austria, many others, are saying that if you were vaccinated more than 270 days ago, you can't come in. What does that mean? You're going to have to show a proof of a booster shot. So if you're eligible for a booster shot, uh, do it. Otherwise, you may not be able to travel. And some countries are not doing a 270-day cutoff. That's nine months. They're doing a 180-day cutoff. That's six months. One of those countries is Israel. So pay attention. Get your booster shot. All right. Now, the uh, <laughs> there's one more thing. Uh, I talked about this on my radio show a couple of weeks ago. It, it, it basically triggered a lot of email, most of it negative, towards me. Uh, I understand why. I'm going to tell you what I said. I'm going to tell you what you said. And then I'm going to respond. Here's what I said. What was my biggest problem with restaurants before the pandemic? The terrible twos. What do I mean by that? Small two-top tables where they would sit you with your dining companion six inches away from another terrible two-top and a couple you didn't know and a couple on the other side of you that you didn't know. And whether you liked it or not, you were now involved in their conversation. You had no space to eat, no space to think, no space to enjoy, to enjoy your meal. It was too loud. And this was supposed to be a pleasurable dining experience. So what did I do before the pandemic? And yes, I do it today as well. I always make a reservation for three because then the, res then the restaurant has no choice but to give me a table for four. Elijah doesn't show up. I tip the server accordingly because I know they needed a bigger tip, but at least I can think, I can breathe, I can have a conversation that's not shared with anybody else, and I can enjoy the meal. Now, during the pandemic, when social distancing rules came in, what did restaurants do? They had no choice. Spread out the tables. Even those terrible twos became tolerable because you weren't sitting next to anybody else. Okay, I get it. But guess what? They're back. They're moving them back in again. And so I'm continuing to make reservations for three. So that's what I said. And remember I said I would tip the server accordingly because I understood that they were expecting a bigger tip with more people. I get it. I totally get it. I respect it. I understand it. But then the avalanche of emails came in basically saying I was arrogant, I was elitist, I was disrespectful of waitresses and waiters and the restaurant owners themselves. I'm not. I do not deny any restaurant the opportunity to make money, especially in a, in a, in a business that is by definition very risky, even before the pandemic. And here's my suggestion. Give me a table where I can sit and breathe and I'll pay more for it. I really will, right? Uh, let's go back to those folks who wanted to upgrade to premium economy. I'll pay that if I want that experience. I do the same thing at a restaurant. I do not want to go and sit in a congested area. Not a public health issue. It's basically an enjoyment issue, which is compounded now by a public health issue. So that's what I said. That's what I will continue to say. And if you think I'm being arrogant or elitist, I'm not. I'm being practical right? Dining out is supposed to be pleasurable. And if you are running a restaurant where you have to turn the tables every 20 minutes or every 15 minutes, or you want to crash people next to each other, I know the name of that restaurant. It's called McDonald's. All right, enough said on that. Now I got to share with you one more thing that is driving a lot of people a little batty. And I'll talk about it again tomorrow on our radio show, by the way. Uh, which is airing from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern time. Check your local listings. And if you can't find it, we stream it live. Just go to our website, petergreenberg.com, 10.05 to 1 p.m. Eastern. Boom, we're in. Here's the story. We've talked about frequent flyer programs before. You know you have some frequent flyer miles lying around. You've earned them, whether or not you're able to chance to redeem them. But here's the question. Are your miles income? Can they be taxed? We don't know the answer, but this is what we do know. A recent U.S. tax court ruling said that if the miles you earned were worth more than $600, they're taxable income. What an insult. Now, the argument on the other end of that, in the case that was lost, 
was that this was not about earning miles. The miles were actually a form of a rebate and were therefore not taxable. Now, the good news, if there's any good news, is that the, the this tax court ruling is not binding and that the IRS has not yet issued a formal rule on this. However, and even for the moment that your miles are safe, you know what? Don't ever underestimate the ability of a very zealous IRS auditor to declare them as income, and there you go to tax court. Now, here's the ironic thing. This is not a new issue. It rears its ugly head every single year. And most of the time, it never gets to tax court because the tax court throws it out. Why do they throw it out? Here's the irony. How many tax court judges are members of the frequent flyer programs? It's the ultimate conflict of interest. It's a recusal on parade. So it's still an issue. One tax court does not necessarily mean you're going to get a ruling on this. But you know what? Redeem your miles, please. Unload them. All right? You don't want to lose. It's, it's bad enough to, trying to redeem them than to get insulted by the fact that they might be taxed. I really don't think that's going to happen. But I did want to report that tax court ruling and just say it's back. The issue is back. All right. Now. Let's go to some of your questions, and then I got I have a trivia question for you coming up. All right, let me scroll back up here. MW wants to know, when would I suggest booking a June 4th ticket to Miami? Today. Uh, Pauline says, hi. Patrick says, uh, greetings from the Grand Princess. My God, you've been on that ship a while, Patrick. Uh, J.R. Ha from Des Plaines, Illinois. I know Des Plaines. You know why? Because when I was a student at the University of Wisconsin, driving up from Chicago, what did I pass every time on I-90? The Fred Harvey Oasis right there at this place. And you know what the Fred Harvey Oasis now? You know what it is now, the Oasis? It's a McDonald's. Uh, Bernice says, hello from Tanzania. Always hello to my friends in Tanzania. And uh, we will see you soon. And in fact, an opportunity for me to remind you, April 18th, that's the week our Royal Tour of Tanzania premieres with the president of Tanzania. Check your local listings on PBS. Jack says, good morning from Indiana. Charlie, or Cherie, excuse me, Cherie says, why are flights so high from RSW to DTW? I'll tell you why. Because there are no nonstops the last time I looked, right? And it's not a high-frequency flight, right? If you're smart, and a lot of people do this, take a look at RSW, right, in Florida, and Look where the airports are within 60 miles of RSW that might provide you a nonstop flight or another connection that would be cheaper. Simple as that. Uh, Dorothy says, Nevada. Hello, Dorothy. Ah, another Arusha person from Tanzania. Hello, Charles. Uh, hello from Scottsdale from ML. Uh, Richard says, greetings from St. Lucia. She misses you, Peter, and I miss her right back. Um, that's okay. Ah. Carmen saying happy Friday. Gail saying hi from snowy Pennsylvania. Yeah, what's I'm looking out the window here, it's about to be snowy in New York as well. Uh, do I know the countries that require a negative COVID test are accepting the results of a home test? Zero. Zero. The home test is only for you to figure out how you're feeling and where you stand. For example, I wanted to go visit my sister recently in Boston. She goes, you can't come see me until you do the home test. I just need to know. She's right. She's a doctor. We did the home test. We went. But nobody's going to accept the home test results. I mean, it's sort of like an open book test in school. You're going to cheat. Forget it. Uh, Michelle says, aloha from Maui. I'll be over there soon. As well. I'll be over there in April, as a matter of fact. Uh, Laurel says, good morning from Southern California. Jana says, hello from snowing Chicago. It's snowing already. Okay. Leaving for Israel on Thursday. Is it considered red? Do you think I will be going? Uh Look, who's considering it red? Not Israel. We are considering it red. Remember, we continue the metrics that don't really help. We're considering it red based on the vaccination or incidence of cases in that country versus our own conditions. Now, Janice, I'm assuming you're vaccinated. I'm assuming you're boosted. I'm assuming you're going to wear a mask and, and practice social distancing. Wash your hands early and often and your doctors told you you had no pre-existing conditions that would prevent you from responsibly going there, then you go. Uh, hello, Betty from Colorado, soon to be back in Florida. I get it. 
MW, good morning from Michigan. When is the best time to buy a ticket from Detroit to Miami for June 4th? I already answered that. Uh, good morning from Las Vegas. Hello, April. Uh, Lorena says, greetings from Arctic, Michigan. <laughs> and you say your birds are, are loving your heated bird bath. Isn't that considered? All right, Lorena. Uh, Alicia says, I'm booked for Morocco in April. Do I think Morocco will open to travelers? I do. I actually do. Uh, Grace says, I canceled my Europe trip last December, rebooked for March. How is the travel situation for Switzerland, uh, north of Italy and France? Right now, it's open. Uh, but remember, Switzerland is one of those countries that's demanding that booster vaccination, right? They want to see proof of that. Uh, Terry says, table for three, love it. Well, at least somebody likes my idea. Remember, necessity is the mother of invention. I didn't wake up one morning and say, okay, I'm going to make a reservation for three just for the hell of it. I decided I was going to make a reservation for three because I was sick and tired of the terrible twos. Simple as that. Hey, good morning from snowy Cincinnati. It's snowing everywhere. Um, Colleen is saying, calling in from Watsonville, capital of the artichoke. Is that like Gilroy, capital of the garlic? Uh, they even have artichoke ice cream here. Okay, you've gone too far. <laughs> uh, definitely tops the, oh, there it is. Definitely tops the garlic ice cream in Gilroy. You beat me to it. Okay. <laughs> Evelyn says, greetings from Denver. Sue says, having a hard time finding a flight from Seattle to St. Thomas. A 45-minute layover. I don't want any other flights are more. Oh, I don't want and other flights are more expensive. What's the best way to find a flight? If I had to guess, uh, I would take a red eye from Seattle to Miami and give yourself a two or three hour layover and then a real quick hop from Miami to St. Thomas. That would be my choice. Uh, Colin says, oh, you're the least arrogant person I know. Well, don't, don't get me started, <laughs> but I'll take the compliment. Uh, Okay, Lorena says, I hear people talking about receiving their booster, then traveling again. We're totally vaccinated. It has to be within six months. So they get another booster and then another booster. But I haven't heard comments from medical people addressing multiple booster shots. Well, guess what? I'm not a medical people. But, uh, and I can't tell you one way or the other, but you know what? We will check with a doctor. My, aunt, my assistant, Anthony, will get that person this week on the phone or early next week. And by next week, we'll be able to have a reasonably decent answer for you about can you have too many shots? Uh, Robert says, going to Rio next month, I did purchase travel insurance. Well, don't get me started. Robert, who did you purchase it from? Did you read the policy language? Does it really protect you? Honestly, did you look at all the pages of the policy? I understand the intention of it, right? Who is offering the insurance? Was it a government regulation? Was it a private company, a third party? Or did you buy it on the website where you booked your trip? Tell me more. Uh, Paul says, uh, cruise insurance. My cousin booked a cruise for February and bought the cruise line trip insurance. Good idea or bad idea? Here we go again. You bought it from the travel provider. I'm a huge fan of trip cancellation and interruption insurance if you read the policy language and you don't necessarily buy it from the travel provider themselves. I can guarantee you that the policy language and the earlier policies provided by the travel provider are not as beneficial to you as a third party procedure. Go to a travel agent, have a conversation. Remember the lost art of the conversation? This is the time to revive that. Have a conversation with a travel agent who can sell you that insurance, they get commissioned on it, but most importantly, they can explain it to you, right? You'll see it pop up on everybody's website when you're buying a ticket or booking a cruise or renting a hotel room it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the best insurance to buy, okay? Gina says hello from uh, from San Diego. Uh, ah, Joe wants to know, what do we need to do to travel to and from London? Right now, London has basically opened up, right? You used to have to do another test when you landed at the airport. Not necessarily so. Ireland just opened wide up. No testing required. Uh, I'm going to uh, the Canary Islands very soon. And in Spain, they've opened up as well. Uh, ah, yeah, this is a tough one from Michelle. Can I please comment on Crystal Cruises refunds to their cruising clients who were booked on trips that have been canceled? Michelle, I'm hoping that you didn't book six months ahead, and I'm hoping that you booked using a credit card. If you did, get on the horn right now with your credit card company, dispute the charge, and get your money back that way. Do not wait for Crystal Cruises to refund your money. Their parent corporation has declared insolvency. Most of their chief executives and top people have resigned. Uh, 
Their assets are basically in liquidation. And those three ships, the big cruise ships that they have, the, the two big ocean liner ships and the expedition ship, the new one called the Crystal Endeavor, they're in play and maybe snapped up by other cruise lines. But in terms of getting a refund from Crystal right now, you're in a long line of unsecured creditors. And uh, not a good thing. You may have seen the story last week that Crystal owed a $4 million fuel bill and the oil company went to a federal court judge and got the judge to agree to seize the assets in uh, to make sure they got paid. What are the assets of the cruise line? The ships. And here was one of the ships heading back to Miami for its final cruise to get rid of the passengers prior to maybe shutting down. And when they heard that, the ship turned around mid-ocean and sailed to Bimini, where the passengers got off there and were ferried back home in relatively rough water, by the way. The ship did not want to show up in Miami because it would have been seized. So if you're dealing with that kind of issue, waiting for a refund, you'll be waiting for Godot and he's already sailed. So call your credit card company, get it in writing, start that process now. Okay. Uh, one of the requirements April wants to know for getting into Puerto Rico, it seems a bit confusing. Any tips for Puerto Rico? It is confusing. And they change their rules by the day as well. A perfect opportunity to book your trip through a travel agent. And by the way, I'm not here shilling for travel agents. I'm here promoting conversation because they'll know the up-to-date. Just going online to see what the rules are, that's where it gets confusing because not every website is updated. And you may be getting, even with well-intentioned, misinformation. Okay? Uh, hello from New Orleans Airport, otherwise known as the Louis Armstrong International Airport. Ah, greetings from KLM in Tanzania. Hello, Dinya, Digna. Nice to talk to you. Uh, hello from Frosty, Missouri. We're getting a lot of snowy and frosty today. That's from Jolene. Uh, ah, Terry Pierce. Hello from Tony the Tiger and me in the serial city capital of the world. I think Terry and I, we go back a long time when we did a couple of stories there. Uh, Sherry Schaefer Blazowski. Uh, they are nonstop, but so expensive. Delta is the main carrier to Detroit. Of course they are because that was Northwest Old Hub. And Delta, of course, is now Northwest, or Northwest is now Delta. Uh, look, when you're dealing with those kind of trips with less frequency and smaller airplanes, those airfares are going to get high. But I would still encourage you to do a one-stop through another major hub, maybe Miami or Fort Lauderdale, uh, or even Orlando, that where it has more frequency. I guarantee you there are more Orlando Detroit flights and there are RSW flights to Detroit. That would be my suggestion. Mary Bliss says, my son and I are totally confused on how to use your rail passes. Is there real help out there? Of course, I'll give you the help. You can only buy a rail pass in the US in conjunction with your round trip international airline ticket, number one. They sell them in different forms. There's first class and second class and in different time component parts. You can do one week, two week and monthly and longer passes. I do not recommend first class, you won't need it, get a second class pass, and then figure out how many days or weeks you're gonna be overseas and how often and how efficiently you can use the train. So London to Paris, use the train. Paris to Brussels, use the train. Paris to Amsterdam, use the train. Paris to Lucerne, or not Lucerne, to Zurich, use the train. Uh, you'd, be, you'd be surprised how many great connections there are and how many trains and train systems are part of the rail pass. But just be clear on, you don't need first class. In many cases, you do need to be clear on when you're taking the trains, because if you want to save money on a couple of hotels, you can do a couple of night trains. Not every night, you'll be a zombie, but a couple of night trains, and you'll be better off. Okay. Wow, I got one from the from Bhutan today. Hello, Lotai. Nice to talk to you. Joseph is saying, ah, geez, he's receiving me loud and clear from Nairobi. Jumbo. Uh, Jeff saying, uh, I really enjoy watching you on Facebook. Thank you, Jeff. Always so informative. Thank you, Jeff. Jeff's not related to me. My question concerns my COVID card. We are headed to Spain in late April and eventually picking up a cruise in Barcelona. Both of us are triple vaxxed. Are copies of a COVID vax card accepted or must we present the original? Uh, here's what I'd suggest you do. Take the original, right? Take the original, bring photocopies, pack one in a bag you're not going to be checking, give one to your significant other and you'll be okay i know you uh i know you don't want to do that but trust me you do uh 
Kara says the return to the U.S. You can use a home test, FYI, just to be. Oh, it just needs to be supervised on a video call. Are you kidding me? Don't do that. What people sometimes will do for expediency will bite them in the butt when they get to the counter and some, you know, un unaware gate agent goes, "Where's the written piece of paper?" Guys, enough with the home tests. Find a hotel, a public health service, uh, or a concierge service. Or the resort itself might be able to provide one that can give you that test. Go where the locals go. You don't necessarily have to do concierge service at a hotel. Okay. Uh, okay. Here we go. Ah, greetings from Kigali, my old friend Peter from Rwanda. Uh, and he wants us to know that the Rwanda land border and Uganda will reopen on the 31st of January. It's coming up next week. All right. Congratulations. Robert says hello from Fairfax, Virginia. Linda saying hi from South Carolina. Uh, Gina says artichoke ice cream sounds good, actually. Gina, you're on your own on that one. Uh, all right. Here we go. Uh, any insight? Oh, Carmen wants to know any insight to how the Netherlands or Belgium proof of COVID tax apps work? No. You know, guys, I'm a huge fan of manual. Right? What do I always say to the pilots? When in doubt, fly the plane. You will never see me, and I hate to use the word never, but I'm using it. You never see me download my boarding pass on my phone. I want a physical copy. I've been in situations where planes were delayed because their systems went down and nobody could board the plane because they had no proof of anybody being, being on the plane. I did. I had a boarding pass in my hand. Guess who got on the plane? I did. Everybody else was messing around with their apps. I think they're still at the airport. Uh, look. I'm telling you, uh, stay away from the apps right now. Physical con physical evidence really works. Uh, okay, Uganda's checking in now from our friend Chris Crust. They're out there on the gorillas. Uh, Captain Jonathan Atkin. All right, any thoughts on the biggest and privately owned shipping company, MSC, buying the former Alitalia? Yikes. Well, MSC is the biggest shipping company in the world. They also operate a number of great cruise lines. But in terms of shipping, they have more container ships and cargo ships than anybody out there, and they're buying more every day. The idea that they would buy Alitalia, that may be a bridge too far. You know what? Alitalia is toxic. Anybody who has ever touched it has burned or has lost the actual core business, right? I can go through so many companies. And right before Alitalia essentially shut down, the only suitor that was in line to basically save Alitalia was the Italian post office. That'll give you an idea how, how dire it was. They didn't do it either. So I'll check into our friends at MSC to see what they really hope to do with Alitalia. This will be an interesting development. I will get back to you on that. Um, okay. Uh, Sid says, does anyone ever read all the travel policy language in total? And even if they do, if they're blown off, are the options really, really viable options? It's all about the language and the definition of terms, right? Would you buy a car with a 10-year warranty if you didn't read what the limitations were, right? I wouldn't buy a car with a 30-day warranty if I didn't read what the limitations were. And if you don't understand the limitations, that's when you have a conversation. Okay, Debbie's saying hello from Boynton Beach. Uh, ah, Bjorn is saying, I just completed three weeks driving in Namibia, Botswana, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. All COVID tests were easy, and folks there adhered to the rules. Good news. We love that. And by the way, driving in Namibia, I bet that was crazy. I love it. I love it. Botswana, I've done by car. Zambia, I've done. And Zimbabwe has been nuts. But I did Zimbabwe by train all the way from Pretoria up to Victoria Falls on a wonderful train trip, Rovos Rail. Check it out. Uh, okay, here we go. Gail says, glad I recommend the red-eye flights. I take them all the time, and it's not because I still think I'm in college. Sometimes they are the most efficient and the least likely to cancel. Um, all right, let's see. All right, uh, I'm going down here. Ellen is saying, breaking news, ah, Morocco to resume air travel starting February 7th. I told you just a few minutes ago you were going. Thank you for that update, Ellen. I appreciate that. Uh, 
Gina says, third-party insurance from a travel agent. It's been top of all our client conversations as agents. So there you go. Confirmation there. Uh, another another hello from Arusha in Tanzania for the great Serengeti migration, the Ngorogoro Crater and Mount Kilimanjaro. We did all of that with the president, and you'll see that again on April 18th, starting on PBS. Ju always, Ju always chimes in from Japan. Hello, Ju. Uh, I got greetings from Jim and Harriet in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, ah, Debbie put this in perspective about those passengers on Crystal going back to Florida. The Bimini Ferry is 90 minutes by boat, but six hours by the time you go ahead to clear and then clear in the Bahamas. Never again. Uh, Victoria says, hi from Redondo Beach. Heading to Montreux a week from today. Mandatory Swiss digital COVID certificate. Fine. Also bring the printed one. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, Catherine saying, I used the Binex home test in Kenya, supervised over video. I'm sure it worked perfectly. I'm sorry. I don't like to roll those dice. That's just me, guys. Um, Frank is saying, Aloha from Hawaii. Carmen saying, Oh, I meant because the cities are requiring the apps to get into venues. Okay. If that's the case, fine. But, you know, I have my. Uh, uh, my Vax card photo on my cell phone. And anybody who looks at it, just like their eyes glaze over, they don't even read it. But they ask for it. I mean, I still carry it with me, though. Uh, hello from Chicago. Jack is saying, Viking cruise August to British Isles and North Sea, Baltic areas. Do I think this cruise will happen with regard to COVID issues? I do. But once again, if you're booking a cruise or an airline ticket, or a hotel. It's one thing to say that the airlines have canceled their you know, draconian ticket change fees and you'll be protected that way, but no such guarantees with hotels, resort operators, or cruises. You need to have a bona fide, real conversation with a travel provider. It doesn't have to necessarily be a travel agent, but someone who is a decision maker that you can confirm in writing as to what your rights are if either A, they cancel the cruise, or B, you do. We don't want to live in another world of credit vouchers. Doesn't work. Okay. Okay. Lee in Franklin, Tennessee. When do I think Japan will open? Probably May. Uh, Robin saying hello from Williamsburg, Virginia. Sorry I'm late. No points will be deducted, Robin. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Captain Jonathan Atkin wants to know if I've ever sailed on the ancient vessel M Lake Tanganyika. I haven't, but I have sailed on one of the oldest vessels on the Nile, and we'll get you a picture of that in a couple of weeks. It was wild. I mean, it was Agatha Christie times three. Uh, okay. Uh, Sherry wants to know of all the airports, including across the pond, have COVID testing. Well, many private services are there, but no guarantees. Um, and Drew just answered from Japan, not anytime soon. That's what I'm saying, May. Uh, do I think they possibly could reclassify pandemic to endemic, and this would make travel insurance cover COVID illness impacts? Well, here's some good news. There is, an, oh, there are a number of insurance companies offering now policies that do purport to protect you from COVID, whether you test positive, whether you have to be hospitalized, whether you have to be flown home. One company that's redone it is Allianz. Uh, you'll see them pop up online. But once again, go through your travel agent to get it. You still need to have that conversation. Another company that's relatively new to the business is Kovac, right? COVID, Kovac, C-O-V-A-C. They also offer this service. It also includes medical repatriation and evacuation, as does MedJet Assist. But keep in mind, there are exclusions. There are age limits. There are medical uh, pre-existing condition limits, and there are destination limits. As I said the other day on CBS, no one's going to cover you for your vacation in Syria. I know that's an extreme example, but you get the point. There are some geographic exclusions. Okay. Uh, now, let's go back here. Oh, it's now time for our trivia question. You ready? All right. See who gets this. There are four states in the United States where the capital city of that state starts with the same letter as the state itself. So to give you an example, it would not be Cacramento, California. 
but now you get the idea. See if you can guess them. I'll give everybody about 30 seconds. I'm not going to sing the Jeopardy theme song, but I'll give you 30 seconds and tell you a little hint. One's far west, two are sort of Midwest and Southwest, and one is very much East Coast. I'm sure that didn't help any of you. All right, you ready? All right, I'll, go. I'll wait another 10 seconds. The next week's trivia test is going to even be harder. This one's pretty easy, although there's one that nobody ever gets. Here we go. Honolulu, Hawaii, Indianapolis, Indiana, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and the one that nobody ever gets, Dover, Delaware. Now you know. All right. Let's go to some of your questions. I'm going to get to them right now. Give me one second. And, ah, here we go. I have to turn the page over. Uh, all right. I'm writing from Maui. We have reservations on Crystal in late February, fully paid, and the Northeast Passage in 2023, partially paid. Will I be able to get all of my funds back? This is not an escrow situation. You're not going to get them back from Crystal anytime soon. I hope you paid with a credit card. Get on the phone with your credit card company now. Dispute it. They understand it. Believe me, you're not the first person to call them about Crystal and get your money back. If for, if for any reason they don't get it back to you, let me know. You write me to peter at petergreenberg.com. I'm assuming that you booked this within the last six months. I hope you didn't book it outside of 180 days, but let me know. Okay. Here's one from Kevin. Uh, have I exposed the poor customer service and impediments EasyJet has built to prevent customers from using their travel disruption vouchers, particularly bad for U.S. customers because there's no 800 number? When it comes to EasyJet, there's never an 800 number. Look, EasyJet and Ryanair should have a motto. We're not happy until you're not happy. Sorry, guys. That's been my experience, right? Your flight experience is, de is defined by all the things you can't do and all the things you can never do and all the people you can never reach, but you get a great fare. So here's the problem. EasyJet doesn't fly to the United States. They're a UK-based discount carrier. You may, have to, I mean, you may have to do a cell call to their 800 number there, which will be a little bit costly. But if you need to talk to somebody, that's how you're going to have to do it. All right. Here's one from uh, Zare. Is there a fifth freedom flight between Lisbon and Los Angeles? Remember I talked about fifth freedom rights? Uh, flights like you know New York to Milan on Emirates or uh, Sao Paulo to Buenos Aires on Turkish? Well, there's no fifth freedom flight from Lisbon to, uh, to Los Angeles. However, uh, there are some really cool flights that you can take that will still get you there with a stop, right? Because TAP doesn't fly to LA, they fly to San Francisco. Uh, and I would much rather take that nonstop TAP flight on an A330 and then hop down to LA. It saves you a lot of time than trying to connect, especially at this time of the year, through New York, uh, Chicago, or, uh, or even Dallas. Okay? Uh, here's one from Nancy. Do you have to bring the original vaccine cards on international trips or cruises? Also, do you have to bring original prescription bottles and not the cases? Okay. Let's start with the vaccine cards. I'm a big fan of the originals, guys, but make copies. Uh, as far as prescription drugs, if you have a prescription from your doctor, Xerox that. Even ask the doctor to give you a note and to describe the drug that you're taking from its brand name as well as its generic name. Keep that with you at all times, okay? That's what you want. Uh, all right. Oh, what is the best day, Victoria wants to know, what's the best day of the week to purchase airfare tickets? It's been changing radically over the years, but right now, it's Sunday night. All right, so now you know. Uh, Delaney says, I saw the Caribbean is considered very high risk now by the CDC. Can I get refunded on airfare because of a CDC announcement? No, you can't. As long as the airlines are still operating there, then your contract of carriage sort of requires you to take the flight, unless the airline cancels the flight. And I'm not seeing any airline canceling flights to the Caribbean because everybody's still going. And in fact, the rates that they're getting in hotels in places like the Turks and Caicos and uh, St. Lucia are pretty high. Still very popular. Let's, you know, let's face it. New York is snowing. Chicago's snowing. Right? People want to go down the Caribbean. 
Uh, all right, now let's go to the photo of the week. I love this one. Let's punch it up. There's a great story here. And this comes from Eric Bungay. I hope I pronounced your name right, Eric. But a great story behind this photograph. Oh, by the way, does anybody know where this photograph was taken? India. And he writes, when my wife was just seven years old, she discovered the food and fashion of the wonder known as India. From that very moment, despite the many setbacks she faced, her dream was to travel to that amazing land. While it took us 40 years to make her dream come true, it was an experience she will never forget. To me, this photo so clearly speaks to Paula's strength and courage and to India's serenity and the weight and chaos of the country's daily life. Nice job there, man. I love it. And again, congratulations to Eric for the photo of the week, and especially congratulations to your wife for having finally made that trip. If you've got a photo that you think qualifies as the photo of the week, you know what to do. Send it into us to peter at petergreenberg.com. And if we like it, we'll post it. All right, let's take a look at some last minute questions here before I have to go out into the snow. And, and uh, ah, Robin loved the picture, Eric. I know, me too. Uh, okay, Dinesh wants to know, is Singapore open now? Not really, but Thailand is about to open again. One caution, they've done this before and then they shut right down. But this time I think it's for real. I think they're going to open probably in another two weeks. All right. And uh, ah, Elizabeth says, is there a New York travel show this year? It is. There is one. It's in March. So uh, punch up on your website or on, on, the, on the Internet, New York Travel and Adventure Show. You'll see it. I'll be speaking there, and I'll look forward to seeing you there. Um, and then I'm looking here. Evelyn, thank you for wishing me to stay safe and warm. The safe part I got, the warm part I probably don't. Uh, and uh, all right. Thank you, Robert, for your note about me on CBS. And uh, ah, they're doing uh, more, more up. Ah, they're doing more uh, safaris and uh, operators in Arusha and Tanzania. Nicely done. Appreciate that. Thank you for that. Ah. Shireen got Dover, Delaware. Victoria got Oklahoma City. <laughs> All right. Hey, guys. Thank you again for watching. A couple of housekeeping notes. Of course, our radio show, Ion Travel, airing tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. East Coast time. If you can't find a station in your market, not a problem. Just go right to our website with that imaginative name, petergreenberg.com. Log on. The radio icon about 12, about 10 or 5 a.m. Eastern time, and you'll hear the whole show. Of course, Royal Tour Tanzania premiering April 18th. We'll get, we'll get you more information as we get closer to that date. And uh, you know what? Keep the uh, the emails coming in, peter at petergreenberg.com. We'll answer them online on the radio show tomorrow or Facebook Live next week, which I will tell you will be on Friday. It'll be on Friday, February 4th. All right? And for those of you watching football this week, sorry, Buffalo. That's all I can say. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye, everybody.